Who is the only one with the power to forgive sins against God? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Luke on Walking Through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Luke chapter 5. We're going to be reading from verses 17 to 26. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Luke chapter 5, beginning at verse 17. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in, because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling in the midst before Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said to them, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what, was, what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. The story that we have recorded here is one of my favorite stories found in the Gospel, at least as it concerns the miracles of Jesus. Like in our previous episode, we've already covered this story twice, once in Matthew 9, 2-8, and once in Mark 2, 1-12. However, since we're walking through the Bible one verse at a time, that means we're not going to skip passages we've already talked about. For A, we can be reminded of what we've already studied, and B, so we can find if there are any new details that were added by Luke that we didn't get from the other Gospels. Luke doesn't give us the setting of this story, but Mark did. And so we know that Jesus is back in Capernaum, the place he was in chapter 4. The only thing that Luke tells us about the setting is that it was a certain day, not much to go on for sure. This means that the day of the week is not important, as it must not be significant to the story. Luke adds a detail that Matthew and Mark leave out, though they imply which is that present while Jesus was teaching to the large crowds in this house were the Pharisees and teachers of the law. Remember in Luke 2, where Jesus was in the temple questioning the teachers of the law. Although these men are, are unlikely to be the same people, the positions they held would be the same. These teachers had come from Judea, Galilee, and even Jerusalem to hear Jesus preach. That's how far Jesus' fame had been reaching. Even those in Jerusalem were beginning to hear about him. Now among the crowds who had come was a paralyzed man who desperately wanted to see Jesus. However, because the man was on a cot, his friends couldn't force their way through the crowds in order to get to Jesus. Now his friends could have simply told the man to come back when the crowds were smaller, but that's not what they did. Instead, the friends uncovered the roof and lowered the paralytic man down through the roof in order to get closer to Jesus. These actions of faith impressed Jesus to the point where he told the paralytic man that his sins were forgiven. Now on the surface, this might seem like a bit of a letdown, for this man really wanted to walk. But in the grand scheme of things, this man didn't need to walk in order to be saved. However, he did need to have his sins forgiven. So while Jesus didn't give this man what he originally wanted, he did give this man what he needed. Now the scribes and Pharisees who witnessed this said to themselves that Jesus was blaspheming, for who could forgive sins but God alone? The question we have to answer before we get to Jesus' response is, were they correct in their reasoning about the charge they were leveling at Jesus. When Jesus told the paralytic man that his sins were forgiven him, was he talking about sins that the man committed against Jesus? No, because for all we know, this man never met Jesus before. Was he forgiving the sins against some other person? No, for Jesus would have no right to forgive the sins committed against someone else. And so the only conclusion that can be drawn is that Jesus was forgiving the man's sins against God. But if Jesus isn't God, then just like he wouldn't have the right to forgive the sins committed against somebody else, he wouldn't have the right to forgive sins committed against God. Only God had the right to forgive sins committed against himself, so in this the scribes and Pharisees were right. Jesus, knowing their hearts though, whose objections they merely kept to themselves, called them out. He asked them which was easier, to forgive sins or to tell a paralyzed man to stand up and walk. Of course, forgiving sins was easier, 
Because forgiving sins cannot be seen or felt. It must be accepted on the basis of faith. Jesus, however, did the easier thing first, so that when he healed the man, they would know that he had the power to forgive sins. He then healed the man, and the man immediately walked. The multitude saw this and were amazed and glorified God, saying that they had seen, seen a strange, meaning unique, thing that day. This is truly an amazing story, which helps show us that because Jesus was able to heal this man after claiming to forgive his sins, it proved that Jesus is God, for only God had the power to forgive sins which were committed against him. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Luke chapter 5, verses 27 to 32, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.